Hi, this is John Buck. I'm back again, and I'm, what I'm going to do now, this isn't really a standalone video. This video is a companion to the one I just uh, did uh, showing how to find the impulse response from a difference equation. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is break down just the partial fraction step. I went through sort of the middle of the road, the medium difficulty version. I'm going to show how to, to do it a little more simp a little more step by step if you're not used to that. And then I'm going to show an example uh, or, or another technique for doing things very quickly at the end. So again, this is sort of more partial fractions. Okay, uh, so just to remind you where we were, we had, we had gotten to the point that we said we had our, our uh, difference equation, or sorry, we'd gone from our, starting from our difference equation, and we had ended up with a frequency response that looked like this, 14 plus e to the, plus e to the minus j omega in the numerator, and the denominator was one plus a quarter e to the minus j omega minus an eighth e to the minus j2 omega. And I want to break this in using partial fractions. My goal is to get this, right, what I'm trying to get to is something that looks like a over 1 plus something e to the minus j omega and b 1 plus something else e to the minus j omega. And I haven't really worked these out yet, so I'm just sort of putting them in as squiggles. I need to factor this to find that. Now, when some people first start doing these problems, if you're not quite up to speed with algebra, it might freak you out a little bit to treat e to the minus j omega like just a variable. And and you don't need to do that. If that makes you uncomfortable, it's perfectly fine to say, I'm going to say start with saying let x equal e to the minus j omega. And then it turns out the thing I'm trying to factor and work with, I can write as 14 plus x over 1 plus a quarter x minus one eighth, right, this would be x squared. If e to the minus j omega is x, then I square both sides of this. I'll get e to the minus j two omega. And so I can work with both factoring this and doing the partial fractions all in terms of x, and at the end put things back. However, I'll, I'll get where I'm going easier if I write the, f the factors in a little different form than I normally would, which is I want to keep one alone in front. I want to end up with things that look like this, right? Which in our new notation, this would be like, I'm going to do this in a different color just to set it apart. This would be like essentially saying I want things that are 1 plus some constant times x for each denominator. Because when I know when I take, I'm, I'm looking ahead, and when I turn x back into e to the j minus j omega, denominators that look like this, as we saw in the main video, are very easy inverse Fourier transforms. So that's my payoff. That's why I'm trying to set it up that way. You don't have to. You could do even more algebra one way or the other, but you got to put it back that way in the end. So you're going to do work you just end up undoing. So I would really recommend that you try to practice doing them this way, even if you can't work right with e to the minus j omega. And so the next step, again, is to say I'm trying to factor this into two terms, and I'm going to hope that I can do nice rational numbers for the system. And so I say I want to end up with things like this. I'm going to get 1 and 1 here. I have x and x here to get my x squared. And I say, well, this, I need to factor this into two terms where the product is minus an eighth, and the sum of the two is plus a quarter. And again, as, as we saw in the other video, a good guess is to say one of these would be a quarter and one would be a half. And then it's just a question of looking at saying, well, if I wanted to do this, which, if this is going to be minus, one of these is plus and one is minus, I want the middle term to be positive, so I assign the plus to the bigger term. And when I multiply all this back out, I'll get, a, or, or foil it out, as a lot of people like to say now, I'll get back to this. And so now my next step is to say, and here's maybe where I'll start using, uh, using colors like I did in the last video, I want to get to 14 plus x is equal to 1 plus I'm not sure the colors make that much sense here actually but I'll keep going because I've already done it I'm going to in another step I'm going to break things down by by x Oops. So 
So this is probably getting ahead of myself to put all the X's in green right now. So the next step is I want to get to something that looks like this up here. Um, so maybe maybe that's let me write that out. So I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to, I have two. I'm going to say this is the sum of two first order fractions, and I don't know what they are yet in the numerator. So I'm just going to call them a and b, like as we do in algebra, and say I'm going to try to find a and b to make this equation be true, so that when I combine these back into one common fraction, I would have a numerator of 14 plus x, because I know my common denominator would be the product of these common denominators. All right, and so now is, is when I say, well, my denominator, if I multiplied this through, like I said, would give me this. The numerator would be a times this denominator plus b times that denominator. So now let me write that out. Again, what I'm doing is I'm solving the numerator. And so I'd have a times 1 minus 1 quarter x plus b times 1 plus 1 half x. And all this has to be equal to the numerator I ended up with, which is I need 14 plus x. And again, the color here is emphasizing that although this looks like one equation, it's really two equations put together here, right? And so when I break this down, I say, well, for this to be an equation that's true for every x, I need both the, the constant terms to be satisfied. I need to choose a and b so that this is, constant terms are always satisfied and the first order terms, right, which is here. I guess before they were the e to the minus j omega terms, now they'll be the x. So that's minus 1 quarter a plus 1 half b is equal to 1. And again, these are just the coefficients of x when I multiply all this out. So again, I can go through the same process I did in the main video. I guess kind of redone it, but I'll do it quickly here. So I say, well, what I, I multiply both sides of this by 4, I get minus a plus 2b is 4, or a is equal to 2b minus 4. I take this a, and I plug it in up there, so I get 2b minus 4 plus b equals 14. Moving terms around to that, I get 3b equals 18 again. So b equals 6. So a is 14 minus b, which is 8. So they get get those fractions back. And if I scoot this up just a little more, I can say, now that I'm done, I can put A and B back up here. And so what I've shown is that using this change of variables, x, h of e to the j omega is equal to uh, A is 8 over 1 plus 1 half. And now it's time to put x back to e to the minus j omega. And I have 6 over 1 minus 1 quarter e to the minus j omega. And as I did in the main video, you can go back and multiply these through and see that you get back the same h we started with. And so from here, you just go back to the main video and say, now I need the inverse Fourier transform for each of these terms. So that's sort of, if, if you're not comfortable using e to the minus j omega as one big variable, here's how you can use x's. But again, I'd strongly recommend you do it this way. If you, uh, if you put x first, you're going to have to re-divide everything when you're done, numerator and denominator, to get everything right. It just gives you more chances to make a careless algebra mistake. And so that's why I recommend leaving it this way and not writing them as x minus a and x plus a. You can do it. You can get to the right answer. It's just a little harder, a few more chances to make algebra mistakes. So I also promised you a little more extra for experts here, a, 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 a neat trick to do this quickly, which is let's, let's backpedal up to our original uh, factored version of the equation here. Let me, let me start this on a clean page. So again, coming back to where we have h of e to the j omega factored, and we're trying to find it. And, and for problems like this one, so I've got 14 plus e to the minus j omega over 1 uh, minus a quarter e to the minus j omega 
at 1 plus a half e to the minus j omega. So again, just to underline, this is not continuing what I just did. That was the very basic, I'm afraid of e to the minus j omega, so I want to turn them all into x's because that makes me more comfortable, less stressed. I can solve the problem that way. This is coming back to where we were in the original video and saying, I've got it in this form. I want to go right to partial fractions really fast, and I'm comfortable with my algebra skills. As long, and this is a big if, every term in this, so all these denominator terms must be first order. None of these can be squared or what we call repeated roots. I can get to the final answer pretty quickly with a little algebra that's, that's, that's based on a, on a trick from complex arithmetic, or rather complex analysis. I don't need to break everything down with A and B and write out systems of equations. I write them out like this. I say, well, I know these are my two denominators. And it turns out, as long as there are no repeated roots in the denominator, I can find the numerator for, for this term by pretending I've canceled that term out. So it's like I took this and canceled it out, and then take the rest of this and evaluate it when uh, at the value of e to the j omega that would make the canceled term 0, right? So if I set e to the minus j omega equal to 4, right, this term here would have been 0. So I cancel that out and ignore it. I do this and plug it into the rest of the thing, the rest of the equation, and that's the numerator over here. So let's, let's see how this works out. I'm going to do this one first. So I don't need to go through all those linear algebra, but I have to be careful. It's easy to get this wrong. I have 14 plus e to the j omega is 4. Oh, I'm going to have a problem here. Let me, um, let me undo something before I do that. Okay, so I've shown you how this goes. So I'm going to undo all this here. And so again, I'm ignoring this term here. And setting e to the j omega equal to 4, because that's what would make this term 0 out, which doesn't make sense, right? It, it's like blowing up the denominator. That denominator would be 0. But, but this is basically just the mechanics of how these first-order things work out for something called residuals in complex analysis. So I've set this equal to 4. I get 14 plus 4. I ignore this term, because that's the one I'm working on. And then this one, I get 1 plus 1 half times 4, again, for e to the j omega. When I go over here, I do things the opposite way. So I say I'm going to ignore this and let e to the minus j omega and all the other terms be equal to uh, minus 2. Oh, that's a mess. I set that equal to minus 2. Because if I put e to the j omega to minus 2, this term here would zero out. So again, if I do that, let me uh, backtrack away from that because I'm now just going to remember what I was doing. So again, this was 4. So on this side, then, my numerator is going to be these other two terms with e to the j omega set to minus 2. So I get 14 minus 2 for e to the j omega, 1 minus 1 quarter times minus 2. And again, I've ignored this term because it's the one I'm working on. So right now, that's a lot of algebra, but I can clean that up pretty quickly. This numerator will be 18 over 1 plus a half of 4 is 2, so that's 18 thirds all over 1 minus 1 quarter e to the minus j omega plus I get this one here will be uh, 12, 14 minus 2 is 12 over 1, uh, the 2 minuses turn into a plus and I get plus a half. So this is 12 over 3 halves in the numerator which is the same as 24 thirds or 8 and this is 6. So it's sort, of a, it's sort of a nasty notation to do it that way, to run it all together. You would probably in real life do that on scrap paper on the side and plug it in at the end. So again, as long as I have first order terms, I can use this trick and I've gotten to the same place without needing to solve those system of equations. So this is going to be 6 over 1 minus 1 quarter e to the minus j omega plus 8 over 1 plus 1 half e to the minus j omega. So this one's a little more expert. It takes a little more practice, a little more confidence to be careful not to mix up which terms you're covering. 
when I learned this, it was called the cover-up method because the, the TAs taught us that they would come in here and actually like put a piece of paper. You'd put it in the corner of your hand. or I'm putting my hand over the video screen. That doesn't help you any. But I would, I would take uh, something here. Here, I can do this, my little drawing tool. I, I, I would put a piece of paper over that and hide it. Oh, I don't want to make it do that. Um, but you sort of get the idea that, that I would put this, this, this piece of paper and hide that term so I couldn't get mixed up and then remember what I'm setting e to the j omega to. And as long, again, the key thing here is, is you can do this with as many different terms as you want as long as they're all first order, that none of these are squared or cubed. This will work out and get you the same answer as we've seen. Okay, so that, that's you know, the heart of this video. Here's just sort of my credit screen at the end. Uh, this was, but again, the, the, the main point of this video is not a standalone video. It's showing two other ways to take on partial fractions. If you're still... Uh, intimidated a little by partial fractions or need some more brush up, you can look at uh, Khan Academy has a sequence of videos on how to do them in terms of, of, of just basic algebra that's helpful there. Uh, and I think uh, that's all I got to say on this. So I will talk to you again soon. I hope you found this helpful in, in explaining the partial fractions part of the example because it, it comes into places in a lot of Fourier transforms because as you've seen it has this big payoff that if I can get through the partial fractions I get really easy simple first order inverse transforms. So it makes the inverse transform, uh, inverse Fourier transform much easier. Okay, have a good night.